All right, we're going to learn to be able to divide decimals by whole numbers and by other decimals. So if we're going to divide a decimal, we do it like we normally would. The decimal point in the quotient, which is our answer, goes directly above the decimal point in the dividend. So if we look, we can see that these decimal points are right on top of each other. I can even write the decimal point in before I write the numbers of the answer. So the tricky bit is if you are dividing something by another decimal. So we've got this decimal divided by that decimal. So we would lay it out. We would lay it out like this. But then we're dividing by a decimal, which a calculator can do no problem. But we don't want to do that. We want to do this. So if we multiply them both by 100, that will essentially make this jump over 2. So now I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 2, and this jumps over 2, and this is the magic. We divide that by a whole number 2 now. And now I can go through and do my, um, my division. I think that's right. And so notice how I just had to now put my decimal point in the same place in the dividend as in the quotient, and I just had to make that a whole number. So let's do it. Here we go. Our dividend is 42837 divided by our divisor, which is 3. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my decimal point in there because it goes in the same place in the quotient as it does in the dividend. Now let me work it out. Okay. And I use my calculator to check that's right. And there is my answer. Just making sure I align those decimal points. Now, same for this one. We are dealing with a whole number divisor, so we're not going to do anything with that. And we're going to keep 0 0.0234 where it is. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Hello. I'm going to put my decimal point in my quotient directly above uh, what it is in the dividend. So I'm going to have a bunch of zeros to start with. I don't get, I can't put four into two, but I can put four into 23, not quite six times, five times. And the trick is here, eight times four is 32. So I got to add another zero and carry that two over there and multiply that by five. That one was a little bit tricky. A little tricky. Now these are the ones that we're going to have to convert our divisors into whole numbers. So let's do that before we start. It looks like I'm going to have to do two hops in both of these. So I get six two three one point six, and you know what? If you and then that makes the whole number three. If you don't believe me, do both in your calculator. I'm not saying you don't believe, me. but if you want to make sure, because we are, we're making them equivalent to what they were before, and we're just making it so that we're dealing with whole numbers. So let me do the maths on this one. All right, that one looks like that looks right to me. And if I did it on the calculator with the decimal it's going to be exactly the same answer. And this next one, it looks like we've got to make three jumps. So one, two, three gives us 31.52. And I'm doing that to both sides, which gives me a solid two. Oops, I nearly forgot to put in my decimal. That would have been a tragedy. Okay, for this one, we're actually going to think of it as dividing by eight to start with, and then dividing by a thousand. So we're going to do a two-stepper here. We have 67.04. I'm going to make absolutely sure I put my decimal in there. And firstly, we're going to divide by 8, because remember, this is 8 times 1,000, but we're dividing by each of them. So 8 into 67.04 into 8 gives me that number. Now remember, I'm not quite finished yet, so I want to take 0.8. 0.38 and divide that by a thousand. A thousand has three zeros. One, two, three decimal point. Therefore, my answer is zero point zero zero eight three eight. Isn't that amazing? Now the order of operations here is always going to be brackets, indices, uh, whichever comes first from left to right division, multiplication, and whichever one comes first from left to right, addition and subtraction. So let's have a good look at what we're looking at here. Okay, so I don't have any brackets. I don't have any indices, which would be to the power of two or, or square root of two. So I've got division and multiplication. So I'm going to carry 3.8 because there's nothing happening with there yet. But now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do 1.6. I'm going to use my calculator, 1.6 times 
times 0 0.45. You're allowed to use a calculator in whatever the instance is. And I'm going to add to that. You know what? I can do this now at the same time, because it's the next thing I'm going to do anyway. And that's going to give me, funnily enough, a larger answer, 12.5. And now, so I've done that, I've done that, and now I'm, going to, I'm allowed to take 3.8, because from left to right, that's the order it comes in. 3.8 minus 0 0.72 gives me 3.08 plus 12.5. I know you're tempted to do the, the addition first, but it's not going to give you the right answer. I'm really sorry. It's just life. So using the order of operations and dividing and multiplying before we add or subtract from left to right gives us that beauty answer. Thank you.